It was a quiet and clear night in the countryside as a lady slept peacefully with her dog calmly at the end of her bed, when suddenly a loud crash woke her. Something fell through the ceiling. The dog began barking at the sudden loud noise of the unknown intruder. As the lady gathered her senses and wiped her face, she turned on the light. She looked around her room, trying to find the cause of the noise. She was shocked and confused to see a great hole in the ceiling. And directly below, right next to where her head was just lying, she saw a rock the size of her fist. Shaken, she immediately called the responsible person as she thought. But he advised that the rock was likely from a nearby construction site. This added further confusion as she was in the middle of nowhere. Nothing could have caused this to her knowledge. The next day, the responsible people visited to investigate. Further, the more detailed analysis showed that it wasn't just any rock, but a meteorite. Did you know that the chances of getting under a meteorite are about 1 in 250,000? It seems like relatively good odds. However, just for comparison, the odds of meeting a shark is 1 in 3.5 million. Do you often fly by plane? Perhaps you fancy your chances with the weather. Being caught in a tornado is a possibility of 1 in 13 million. And if you are a bit of a risk taker, the chances of you winning the big lottery is 1 in 292 million. So, given the odds, it would appear that a meteor fall would be a pretty common occurrence. Yet there are very few known instances of anyone getting by one. The Canadian woman who received the unexpected guest was lucky that it was a small stone. In 2013, an asteroid entered the Earth's atmosphere to the territory of the city of Russia with a population of 1 million people. Little did a cab driver realize, as he drove his cab, that an asteroid entering Earth's atmosphere was the most prominent object from space to enter Earth's atmosphere in over 100 years, measuring 66 feet wide. Everybody knows asteroids are gigantic objects revolving around our Sun that aren't planets or moons. They're made from rocks and dust and come in all kinds of weird shapes. The largest is at about 329 miles in diameter. Asteroids mostly live within the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. You can imagine what a journey it made to the Earth on that day. Given that the asteroid belt is so extensive and populated with all sorts of debris, collisions between objects are very likely. As the objects collide with one another, their trajectory changes, leading them outside of the asteroid belt. And on that day, it launched them in the direction of our planet. The city taxi driver dropped off his fare as the asteroid entered the atmosphere. The man saw many people on the street pointing to the sky. He got out of his cab and looked in the same direction. He saw a long tail of smoke across the sky with a bright object at the head of it, hurtling towards Earth at an unimaginable speed. As the atmospheric pressure slowed and heated the asteroid, causing it to glow brighter, it sped towards Earth. The man, unable to turn away, stood mesmerized. He watched on as the asteroid became brighter and brighter until it became brighter than the sun for a moment. The man turned his head away and covered with his arms to block the flash, as it was too blinding to look directly towards it. But as the asteroid reached its peak luminosity, it broke apart into several pieces that then continued falling towards the ground. Startled, the man looked around. The people on the street were also standing silent and unsure of what had just transpired. Suddenly, they heard multiple loud bangs in the near distance. The Earth shook as the falling pieces of the asteroid hit the Earth. Windows within buildings surrounding the street shattered. Cars parked had their alarms activated by the vibrations. Some people ran, but others in the street stood frozen, looking around at one another, still trying to make sense of what had just happened. The ground affected was extensive, covering up to 60 miles wide. Windows were shattered throughout the town. As the dust settled and repairs were made, scientists analyzed the pieces of the asteroid to identify where it had come from. They found that a collision within the asteroid belt had indeed caused it, and this 66-foot intruder was only a tiny piece of an even more giant asteroid. Given the crowded location when the asteroid fell, it was a miracle that no one was physically hit. There has only been one case where a meteorite had made physical contact with a person. 
It happened in 1954 in the USA. A lady was relaxing on her sofa, enjoying a short nap, when suddenly she was woken by a jolt in the side of her belly. The asteroid had been noticed by many in the same area. Reports were recorded that it had been the size of a basketball as it fell towards Earth. But after it burned up in the atmosphere and crashed through the woman's house, it had shrunk significantly by the time it made contact with her. After it was confirmed it was an intruder from space, the American lady then became the first and only recorded person on Earth hit by a meteorite. Within the asteroid belt, the asteroids also share their home with comets. Comets share the same ranges in size as the asteroids, but they're mainly made of ice. They can also have bits of rock and dust within their body. Comets have a long tail following behind them, which is made from their interaction with the sun. Comets aren't only located within the asteroid belt. They're well known to have all kinds of paths, not only restricted to just within our solar system. Some sightings of these periodic comets are documented in human history, appearing on infrequent occasions as they make their long journey throughout the solar system. Most notably is Halley's Comet, which can be visible on Earth on average once every 76 years. The last one was about 36 years ago. The first known record by humans of Halley's Comet was as far as 240 BCE. Halley's Comet is next expected to say hello in about 40 years from now. So make sure you get your telescopes ready. Asteroids and comets are big and scary for sure. And we all know that the dinosaurs were not able to detect the asteroid that impacted the Earth, which ended their reign on this planet. But luckily for us humans, we have scientists carefully observing our solar system. Asteroids and comets are so large that they can be easily detected, so there's nothing to be concerned about soon. Now that we have the concerning space rocks out of the way, Let's move on to their smaller relatives, the smallest being meteors, made from rock and dust that are so small that they burn up within our atmosphere, having no impact other than a light show. Meteor showers provide the most exciting display for all your novice astronomers out there. Meteor showers are very common, occurring around 30 times per year. They're easily predicted when to occur. You'll just need to ensure you're outside of the city on a clear night and be sure to bring a blanket along with you. But why do we get meteor showers, and why are they so easily predicted? Well, it all relates to how the comet gets its tail. When the heat from the sun interacts with the comet and separates gases and pieces of the comet, the Earth then orbits into the path of that same debris, which creates the magnificent display of the meteor shower. Being that meteors are too small to reach the ground of the Earth and burn up in our atmosphere, what if they could reach Earth? Well, they would then be called meteorites, made up of the same ingredients as meteors, but ultimately, we would only find solid rock if we happened to come across them. What's interesting about meteorites is that they are pieces of an ancient puzzle that have been flying around space for millions to billions of years. They could even been flying aimlessly in space longer than our sun has been burning brightly in our sky. Our solar system will continue to provide more surprises for us to learn from just like the asteroid that arrived in Russia in 2013, which scientists only overlooked due to another asteroid that was being monitored closely on the very same day. But as we continue to have these experiences, we will continue to learn from them. And hopefully, when the next big one flies by, we'll be ready. About 8 billion inhabitants of planet Earth found out the same terrible news in one day. Someone saw it on TV. Others heard it on the phone while scrolling through social media or listening to music. Some witnessed this news in a dream while sleeping. Someone's voice said it in all languages to ensure everyone understood it. I have good news and bad news for you. Let's start with the bad news. You're all characters in YouTube videos in which your planet gets into a situation where the moon breaks in half. For the audience, it will be a hypothetical story, but for you, these events will become a reality. The good news is that, I was joking, there is no good news. But don't worry, the apocalypse won't start on your planet, maybe just a little bit. Have a nice day! At first, the entire population panics. Then, a few days later, everyone calms down. Maybe it was a mass hallucination, and the moon will be alright. But at this moment, scientists have discovered the danger. A colossal meteorite is flying towards us from the distant depths of space. 
This meteorite is super fast and pretty flat, but has sharp edges. Fortunately, it will miss the Earth by a few thousand miles, but the Moon won't be that lucky. The meteorite flies through our Earth's only natural satellite directly in the middle. So it passes through the Moon, sweeps past our planet, and flies away into distant space. At this moment, all people can't take their eyes off the Moon. The meteorite cuts it perfectly in half, gently, clearly, painlessly. So what shall we do now? Will the Earth survive this? Our satellite breaks into two equal parts, but fortunately, they don't fly away from each other. The Moon's great gravity attracts them back like a magnet. Scientists are sure that the parts will connect in a couple of billion years, and the Moon will become the same as it used to be. But the coolest thing is that people won't feel any changes. Everyone around the world will celebrate this good news. The voice was wrong. But then, another problem appears. A massive meteorite in the form of a shoe is flying from the deepest space to us. It enters our solar system and approaches the Earth at high speed. The space boot crashes into one half of the moon and then flies away. Now, the moon is definitely breaking into two parts. The first half remains in the same place. The second one is flying towards us. A small meteor shower begins on Earth because of the falling moon fragments. But it's not so bad. Most of these rocks are burning up in the atmosphere. But almost the entire split-off half is falling apart around the orbit of our planet. It forms a stone belt. Now the Earth is like Saturn. Rotating fragments destroy part of our artificial satellites. Communication and the Internet work inconsistently. It takes people a couple of years to restore a stable connection. The International Space Station no longer exists. Luckily, all the astronauts managed to return to Earth before half the moon got to them. So, moon rocks are flying around the planet, and people see half the moon in the sky. Life doesn't change much for the first few days, but those who live on the coast of the seas and oceans notice the consequences. The moon used to influence the tides. It was flying around the Earth and made oceans take an oval shape. There were tides on the side where the moon was closer. There were ebbs on the opposite side. But now, this schedule is wrong. Half of the moon attracts less water. Yes, the moon lost half its weight and began approaching the Earth. But its gravitational force has become weaker. Seabirds, many species of fish, sea turtles, and other coastal animals may not survive these changes. Their natural instincts associated with the moon help them determine the time for getting food, breeding, and flying south. For example, tiny turtles expect a strong tide in the morning. They run to the water, but the water doesn't reach them. Turtles can't hide in the ocean in time and become dinner for seagulls. Crabs can't lay eggs because the tide has started earlier than usual. Wolves go mad in the woods. They howl loudly every night and can't stop. The whole natural world can't understand what's going on. The human body is also feeling some discomfort. Many people have low and high blood pressure, and some experience severe headaches. Half of the moon changes the entire ecosystem of the planet. Adapting to new conditions will take several tens, maybe hundreds of years. A couple of weeks pass, and people notice the days are now shorter. The moon always slowed the Earth's rotation and made one day last 24 hours. The Earth is spinning faster now. The night and the morning come earlier than everyone is used to. Earth rotation speed has increased and reduced the number of hours per day to 15. People suffer from insomnia or oversleeping. The body needs time to get used to it. Work schedules are changing all over the world. Previously, people came to the office at 9 and left at 6. Now, they arrive at 7 and leave at 2 p.m. Sleep time got shorter and people are really sad because of this. Progress slows down because the short working time. The technologies of the future are now 20 to 30 years late. Hourly pay remains the same, so bosses now pay less for fewer working hours. The whole moon stabilized the weather and climate on the planet. Look at Mars, it has two small moons. They quickly spin around it and rock Mars around on its axis. As a result, strong winds, sandstorms, and thunderstorms often happen on the red planet. Now the half of the moon that approached us takes the Earth out of stable rotation. 
This changes the seasonal temperatures in the world. It even gets hotter in hot places. And snowstorms are raging in cold regions. There are short, massive downpours instead of sunny weather. A typical breeze can grow into a hurricane and small waves into a tsunami. The seasons are changing faster now. Winters are colder and summers are hotter. Changing the rotation of the planet affects the Earth's magnetic field. Since the compass and navigation systems are unstable now, we need to recalculate where the north and south are. Birds can't fly south to wait out the winter since they don't know what direction to fly. Their inner compass is broken. Several hundred years have passed. People are entirely accustomed to the new conditions on Earth. New species of animals and fish have appeared. Birds can navigate the sky by the moon again. The planet's economy has been restored. Hourly wages have become higher. People now get enough sleep from five to six hours a day and work for four to five hours. The reduction of day and night has also affected the entertainment industry. Movies now last one hour. One episode of some TV series lasts 30 minutes. Life goes faster. An average person now lives to be 96 years old. In fact, the passage of time hasn't changed at all. Its calculus did. Several thousand years have passed. People look different now. Now they have big eyes that absorb more light. Half of the moon doesn't shine as bright as the whole thing, so the nights have become darker. It took the human eye a couple of thousand years to develop the ability to see clearly in this new dark. Animals need to navigate better in these conditions, so their eyes have become larger and more sensitive. During all this time, people have cleared the orbit of moon rocks. Several space stations fly around our planet. And again, people hear this strange voice that once told them that they were all characters in one hypothetical YouTube video. This time, the voice says, Your story ends because the video ends. I'm sorry. Good night. So, why haven't people built a colony on the moon yet? It's likely because they don't have enough building supplies. There are no hardware stores there. The only way out would be to deliver materials from Earth. Then, rockets would act as construction trucks. For comparison, imagine you want to build a house and use FedEx delivery to get all the necessary stuff. It would be extremely expensive and rather foolish. Using rockets would be the same. A colony on Mars sounds even more unrealistic right now. The distance from Earth to the Moon is about 239,000 miles, while it's at least 34 million miles between our planet and Mars. But asteroids are another story. They're rocky objects orbiting the Sun like planets, but they're much, much smaller, from 30 feet to 300 miles across. If you combine the mass of all asteroids in the solar system, it would still be less than that of the Moon. Those asteroids that do approach Earth carry trillions of dollars worth of metals and minerals, and some of them come so close that experts believe asteroid mining missions can become a reality in the near future. Your eyes shining, you switch off the TV. After getting to know such cool stuff, you find it hard to fall asleep. When you finally manage to catch some Zs, you dream of floating in endless space. You wake up with a start, feeling disoriented. Your body feels weird. You don't have enough oxygen to breathe. You open your eyes and look around. You're inside a sleeping capsule. Its walls are covered with tons of different buttons and tiny screens. After you experiment for a while, one of the sliding panels sweeps to the side. You crawl out of the pod. The absence of windows and any natural light makes you think you're underground. Dozens of sleeping capsules line the walls. The door leading out of the room is made of metal and looks heavy and unmovable. But once you press the button on the wall next to it, the door soundlessly opens. After climbing up a dark corridor for a while, you find yourself in a smaller room. Your heart sinks. There are at least half a dozen bulky spacesuits inside. What does it mean? Are you in space? Hey, good guess! You try to open the only other door in the room, which looks even sturdier than the previous one. But it just wouldn't budge. You sigh and start to pull on one of the spacesuits. As soon as you're securely packed inside, the door automatically unlocks. After waiting for a while in an airlock chamber, you finally make a step outside 
and the breath catches in your throat. As you look up, you see a beautiful blue orb. It seems to be glowing. Startled, you realize it's Earth, and you're quite close to it. Are you standing on the moon's surface? Unlikely. This space body is way smaller, and its surface doesn't look like the surface of our planet's natural satellite. It has an irregular shape and is heavily cratered and pitted. Over your head, several miles above the surface, you spot a sizable boulder. Then, an asteroid. If so, then the rock suspended in the air is a companion moon. Judging from how close our planet is, it must be a near-Earth asteroid or maybe even an Earth crosser. Those are asteroids that cross our planet's orbit. Astronomers know about more than 10,000 of such space bodies. Almost 1,500 of them can be considered potentially hazardous to Earth. You feel proud of yourself for remembering so much info from yesterday's show. Suddenly, you realize that your spacesuit isn't attached to anything. And still, you aren't floating over the surface or slowly drifting away into open space. The asteroid must have artificial gravity. Otherwise, its own gravity would be too weak to prevent you from flying away. Hmm, come to think of it, creating a gravitational field makes sense. Without it, the colonists would have problems with coordination, balance, orientation in space. They would also constantly feel seasick. Blah. Plus, their bones will lose minerals and get 1% less dense each month. The next moment, the reason why you woke up deep underground dawns on you. The people living on this asteroid must have hollowed it out. Now, they're living inside. They also have made it rotate. The force that's created when a body rotates around its axis, called the centrifugal force, simulates Earth's gravity. Your suit provides necessary protection against cold and radiation. The temperature on the surface of an asteroid can be from minus 100 to minus 150 degrees. Without some heat source, you wouldn't survive for long. When you're on Earth, the planet's strong magnetic field and atmosphere protect you from solar flares and cosmic radiation. But asteroids don't have such a defense mechanism. It must be another reason why colonists live under the surface. Burrowing at least 300 feet deep inside the asteroid is enough to shield the colonists from radiation. Just then, a question pops up in your mind. What are you doing here? As if on cue, you notice a human-shaped figure appear nearby. From the way they gesture, you figure out they must be furious. Suddenly, your helmet radio switches on. Through the background noise, you hear, What are you doing there? We don't have time to waste. Get down to work now. Work? What kind of work can it be? Oh, the colony must house asteroid miners. Astronomers think asteroids might be the material left after the solar system was formed. Or they might be planetary debris. Planets often fall into pieces after getting in space accidents. For example, collisions with other celestial bodies. Even without visiting asteroids, scientists know what they're made of. They use a special technique. It helps to figure out what minerals or metals an asteroid consists of by analyzing the light reflected off its surface. Some asteroids might contain not only iron, magnesium, and nickel, but also oxygen, water, gold, and platinum. The asteroid you're standing on is likely to be one of those containing water. Without it, the colony wouldn't survive. Plus, the people working here likely break this water down into oxygen and hydrogen. That's how they produce fuel that makes all their machines and mechanisms work. And the oxygen is used for breathing. Let's say people mined all the asteroids in the asteroid belt between Jupiter and Mars. Then each person on Earth would get almost $100 billion. That's how much cool stuff these space bodies have. An asteroid with a diameter of less than a mile would weigh about 2 billion tons. This weight would include 30 million tons of nickel, more than 1 million tons of cobalt, and at least 7,500 tons of platinum. Such an amount of platinum alone would cost billions of dollars. And now, imagine how many asteroids like that travel across the solar system. Anyway, you can't procrastinate any longer. After all, you're here to do some mining. While you're shuffling in the direction where the angry man disappeared, you pay attention to the details. The machinery you spot looks to be solar-powered. There are lots of robots dashing around. You guess it allows the colonists to cut down on fuel, food, and other supplies. 
The mines on the asteroid are similar to those on Earth. The method colonists use to extract minerals is scraping them off the asteroid. Deep tunnels and shafts pierce the rock. By the way, those who created them had to be extremely cautious. Asteroids aren't giant boulders. They're rather loosely organized piles of rubble. If you aren't careful while drilling, these enormous heaps of gravel can just fall apart. They can also disintegrate when you spin them to generate gravity. That's why an asteroid must first be emptied out carefully. And then, the colonists have to make sure the spin doesn't cause too much stress to its structure. Speaking of artificial gravity, thanks to it, the miners don't have to worry about valuable ore floating off into space. Otherwise, a large canopy would have to be stretched over the mines and used to collect the precious stuff. After the asteroid's resources finish, the colony will be moved to the next asteroid. After a seemingly endless working day, you drag your exhausted body into your sleeping pod. The only question on your mind is, is it just a dream, or am I stuck on this asteroid for months to come?